Hey everyone, it's your boy, your man, your dude, Daytona Slay and bald-headed Triumph selling man, yammy, noob. Today we're going to talk about why Triumph uses that delicious three-cylinder engine and why they have this weird fascination with the setup. Before we begin, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for being a supporter of my channel. We have over 540,000 subscribers and close to 3 million ghost subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Remember, at 1 million subs, I'm buying a Turbo Busa and I'm going to attempt some dank nooner on it. Now where was I? Oh yeah, back to selling bikes without a commission. Triumph, if you didn't already know, is a motorcycle manufacturer with a relatively long history of production. Their business and production date back to the early 1900s. The company is British and is one of the largest manufacturers of motorcycles today, and is known for most of its post-World War II bikes. They've gone in and out of production and have had various partners and owners throughout the years. Just as much as Yamaha is known for its cross-plane crank and the R1, and Japanese sport bikes in general are known for their four-cylinder engines and an inline configuration, the Triumph motorcycle is known for the three-cylinder engine. It wasn't always a three-cylinder loving company though. If you're a car guy or you know just a little bit about engines in general, odd numbers are typically not the norm. Standard cylinder quantities are usually in even numbers, 4, 6, 8, 10, or sometimes that weird rotary engine that Mazda can't decide if they want to keep or not. On some rare occasions, odd numbers are used, such as the 5-cylinder engine in the Volvo and the Hummer, and then 3-cylinder engines in the Geo Metro and some of the current Ford models. In today's economy, three-cylinder engines are being used as a means for excellent gas mileage and low production costs. A smaller engine is easier to work on in vehicles, too. The engines of today are a lot more capable than those of the past. Most come turbocharged from the factory, and they're usually used in heavier crossovers, unlike the 2,000-pound commuter cars of the past. So why would Triumph choose a three-cylinder engine if the inline four-cylinder was the configuration on all the fastest bikes out there? Let's break down some of the engineering of a three-cylinder and that will help. The three-cylinder engine is an inline configured motor, which means it's basically a four-cylinder minus one at the end. The engine rotates such that each cylinder is exactly 120 degrees apart, 360 degrees divided by three cylinders, and the firing order is exactly 240 degrees apart. Every other rotation per cylinder, the engine fires on that cylinder. What makes a three-cylinder so desirable? Three-cylinder engines, first of all, are smaller and more compact. They don't use as much space as a four-cylinder or a V-twin and can be put into smaller frames. Another benefit is that the engine is cost-efficient. Three-cylinders use less material to create and are economical to produce. Being lighter is a definite advantage, especially on a motorcycle. Three-cylinder engines don't need the same block, head, intake, or exhaust as a four-cylinder engine. Three-cylinder engines are known for being very well balanced. When an engine turns, there are primary forces from the cylinder firing and secondary forces from the cylinder's pistons moving. A three-cylinder is more balanced than other engines because of the degree of separation between the cylinders. The forces are balanced vertically and not on the cross-plane nor horizontally. Intuitively, three-cylinder engines are the split difference between a big torquey V-twin and a high-revving four-cylinder. Now, some people think that that makes the three-cylinder not good at anything, but in a high state of tune, the three-cylinder gives you ample torque in the mid-range and a top-end rush. In my opinion, it's the best of both worlds, and it's why I rock one on my track bike, the 675R. However, I want to give a minute and go over another set of threes. It's my three bikes in the beginner bike giveaway series. There isn't a better way to get a motorcycle than to have one hand delivered right to your door. You'll never win them if you don't enter. We have a Kawasaki Ninja 400, a Suzuki DRZ 400, and a Honda CB650R up for the taking. Remember, any tier of subscription on yamminoob.co, you'll automatically be entered to win. The tiers are different, but you can always have entries, votes, and access to our Discord server. For tiers 2 through 4, you can submit content for our It Came From Craigslist series, which we will be bringing back. And in tiers 3 and 4, you can submit content for Papa Yams to come up with. How cool is that? Top 10 bikes to ride with flip-flops? Kidding. If you're not down with the subscription, that's okay too. We have plenty of new merchandise you can buy at yamminoobmerch.com. Remember, every dollar that you spend is an entry to win any of those bikes. Now, let's keep it moving here. Triumph and three cylinders. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about three cylinder engines and now know some of the reasons why Triumph chooses them. Their first use of a three cylinder engine was back in 1968 with the Triumph Trident T150 and the BSA Rocket 3. Sound familiar? Triumph had partnered with BSA, known as Birmingham Small Arms Company, until the company stopped producing motorcycles and Triumph went on its own in the 1970s. The Triumph Trident T150 had a 740cc vertically split parallel twin three-cylinder engine pumping out a respectable 58 horsepower. The engine was air-cooled and contained on overhead valve setup to move air in and out of the cylinders. 
During its production, over 27,000 bikes were manufactured under both the Triumph and BSA names. The engine used a 120 degree offset which lowered its vibration compared to other motorcycle designs. Firmly rooted in its use of three cylinders, these bikes with the T-150 and the Rocket 3 went on to win top three spots at the Daytona 200 in 1971. That was an excellent display of the three cylinders capabilities compared to other available engines. Modern Day Triumph Triples The Triumph motorcycles that run three-cylinder engines that most riders are familiar to start with in the late 1990s. After Triumph went to receivership in 1983 in the hands of John Bloor, the style and future of Triumph began to change. The first bikes from 1983 exchange of the receivership went in production in the 1991 model year. A lot of research and development took place as Triumph wanted to become a contender against modern sport bike from both Europe and Japan. You gotta remember at this time, sport bikes were really moving off the show room four, so it was a very desirable market to jump into. In 1991, Triumph delivered the first Daytona 750 bikes. These things were British rockets which came with a three-cylinder engine with dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder. The bike had 97 horsepower and 48.7 foot-pounds of torque. Just a reminder, this is from a three-cylinder in 1991. With the same engine specs as a modern-day 600cc from the mid-2000s onward, the Daytona 750 was a stab at the 750cc class which was dominated by Suzuki's GSXR 750 and the Kawasaki ZX7R. However, Triumph's Daytona 750 was an instant success. As Triumph continued manufacturing motorcycles in the sport bike market, the three-cylinder engine became a recurring theme. It kind of became their calling card, as you will. The 750cc engine was stroked out to 885ccs for the Daytona 900. A jab at other sport bikes, the 900 didn't exactly hit its mark. With a dry weight of 465 pounds, it was regarded more as a sport tourer instead of a purebred sport bike. The 885cc engine became the power plant for other models such as the Trident 900, the Thunderbird 900, and others. The Daytona 900 was still an impressive bike, and an improvement on Triumph's typical standard or cruiser design, they were trying to stake their claim in the sport bike market. Now, it wasn't until 1997 that Triumph came out with the Daytona T595 that the company left its mark on the sport bike community. Drawing on its experience from the same three-cylinder engine, four-valve, and dual-overhead cam, the company used the iconic 955cc three-cylinder engine with 128 horsepower and 73.8 foot-pounds of torque. With a wet weight of 471 pounds, this bike was lighter than the GSXR 1100 sport bike from Suzuki and was definitely a contender. With the displacement nearing one liter, it was a three-cylinder bike not to be messed with. It was Daytona's first attempt at a true super sport bike, and it succeeded. The T595 was enough to be the desire of some enthusiasts, but it was still somewhat of an overweight and bulky bike compared to its competition from Japan and Europe. With confusion coming from a 595 name and a 955cc engine displacement, in 1999, Triumph renamed the T595 to everyone now we know is the 955i. In 2001, the bodywork was redesigned to give a more aggressive and sportier appearance. The 955 engine was putting out roughly the same numbers, but was made lighter and handled better. The model was discontinued in 2006, but the sound of this bike is still a wonder in the motorcycling world and is completely unique. Now, one thing we really need to mention here as well is the Triumph Speed Triple. Along the same time as the 955, the Triumph Speed Triple came out and it was an absolute hoot. Featured a massive 1050cc triple, making about 140 horsepower and 82.6 foot-pounds of torque. It was the claim to stake of the Street Fighter look at the time, and I think it really set off Triumph's love relationship with the three-cylinder engine. Many riders are now familiar with the iconic Speed Triple and then later the Street Triple that was born out of the same time of the Daytona, which we must talk about as well. Now, we finally made it, kids, the Daytona 675. This bike was the result of Triumph's use of a three-cylinder engine over the years. After the 955's discontinuation in 2006, Triumph needed a different bike to offer to the market. It still wanted to make the Speed Triple, but it needed something that competed in the middleweight section because that was absolutely popping at the time. Being the kind of company that doesn't steal from customers without giving, the loss of the 955 was shortly missed with the launch of the new Daytona and the Street Triple. The 675 was originally slated for a limited production run, but upon its release, dealers were on back order for the bike. And it's no wonder, because the bike with only three cylinders was keeping up with the likes of the Suzuki GSXR 750. The 675 was putting out an impressive 123 horsepower and 53 foot-pounds of torque. Its wet weight dropped to 407 pounds, so it became a nimble and flickable contender against all of the modern Japanese and European sport bikes. 
Over the years, the 675 released slight improvements. The 2009 model came with technical improvements and a few updated fairings. It also came with an increase in power. In 2013, they revised the platform with a few key changes and updates and gave us what I consider to be the world's greatest sport bike. It's flickable, torquey, fun to ride. However, the Daytona 675 was discontinued in 2018. That moves us to the Daytona 765 Limited. For 2019, Triumph returned with another Daytona model using their Moto2 race engine technology. And a quick side note, the Moto2 is a class of Grand Prix motorcycle racing. So there's MotoGP, Grand Prix if you didn't know, then Moto2, Moto3, and Moto E classes. The E is for electric. Triumph is the engine supplier for Moto2, which means they're gonna be working on and advancing this three-cylinder platform like nothing else. The race engines put out an impressive 138 horsepower, and they're committed to build engines until 2021. For the Daytona, there was always another three-cylinder engine with 128 horsepower. The Daytona 765 is going to be produced in limited quantities, only 765 of them, so the bike is a rarity already. This is one of those opportunities where you can call a dealership and place a deposit and pay the rest when your bike arrives. Not bad, and it's only $17,500. But really, Triumph's cash cow has been the Street Triple. The Street Triple is the tried and true gold standard of three-cylinder motorcycles. It redefined the category of middleweight motorcycles in a naked variety back in 2006, and to this day, remains one of Triumph's best-selling motorcycles. The new Street Triple has the same Moto2-derived 765cc engine, making buttloads of torque. I've heard it's amazingly fun to ride, and it's Triumph's sort of their baby in the sport bike category. So there's the brief history of Triumph's three-cylinder engine. It started out as a split parallel twin that ended up as an all-out race engine and being used in all kinds of bikes. Hell, even Triumph's adventure offering, the Tiger, has a three-cylinder engine. The Daytona is probably the most recognized motorcycle to have the three-cylinder and along with the Street Triple, although Triumph still makes bikes with the same engine technology, such as the Street Triple and the Speed Triple and the Tiger and all kinds of bikes. Even the Rocket 3, the 2500cc Monster Cruiser is a three-cylinder. Now, I don't even have to mention how much of a Daytona Slayer I am. Oof, I just did. How many of my faithful yams and jams have a Triumph motorcycle or have had one? Has anyone really bought a Triumph because of yours truly? Let me know in the comments below. I hope when the dealership asks on the survey, how did you hear about us? You put down, yammy noob. Maybe with enough of those surveys, I can finally get a nice email from Triumph. I know that they're aware of me. I know you're out there. You know I'm out here giving you all this free publicity. I know you'll never talk to me, but it's okay. It's because I love your Daytona so damn much I've bought three of them. Now I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Fact. When mosquitoes feed on you, they're also urinating on you at the same time. Goodbye.